Hey everyone, this video is about my Metal Volcano Tamer. This is a self-powered compact design that is a double loop system meant to get the metal out at a very cold temperature, specifically cold enough to be able to put into a rocket safely. This design is quite compact. I have used up just about every tile I possibly can inside the chamber and it is fully self-powered. There are no connections to any external grid whatsoever. So here are the overlays. First we have our liquid. Ignore the fact that there's actually no coolant in the loop right now. This was because this planet happened to have a frozen core and that was cold enough to actually freeze the liquid that's on this planet, but turned out to be cold enough that I didn't actually need coolant in the loop either. So that's something to keep in mind. If you do have this in a cold enough area, you actually technically don't even need the aqua tuner. But uh, yeah, th this is the actual complete design that is supposed to work anywhere with any coolant that you can put into the loop. I usually just use whatever coolant is available on the planet that I have. I'll use regular water or polluted water. It, it doesn't matter. Either are fine. There's no gas connections. No surprise there. I already saw the power. Automation is relatively simple. Just these three connected to each other. And that brings us to the interesting part which is the conveyance. So the way this works is this sweeper picks up the metal at its initial temperature, puts it into here, which then bridges across into here. This looks a little scarier than it actually is. It's just one loop going like this and this bridging across. This second bridge is necessary in order to set direction. Otherwise it gets confused after it gets inserted in this bridge because it doesn't know which way to flow. So you do need both right there in that little cross goes round and round until it gets cold enough. We've had this set at 140 degrees, which I found seems to be a good number. You could set it a little bit higher or lower if you want, but you know, the steam uh, turbine will pull out quite a bit of heat by itself. So I found 140 degrees is, has been a, a pretty good number to prevent it from looping for too long or to prevent too much heat from being dissipated up top. It then goes to the second loop up top, which is essentially the same configuration as this, just another bridge and another loop. There's a aluminum temp shift plate hiding behind one of these tiles somewhere right there, right behind the center of the turbine. It definitely helps to have one up top. I've got one also in the steam chamber. You can just barely see it behind there. It really isn't necessary, but I had a ton of aluminum, so I threw one back there anyway. But the one up top definitely does help in transferring the heat uh, through the metal conveyor to the surrounding area much more quickly. That is centered right on top of where the pipes would be, where the cooling would be. And the metal comes out nice and cold, as you can see over here, because of our nice frozen core or whatever. Our metal is sitting at a nice, you know, minus 65 degrees for 50 tons of tungsten. But, uh, you know, e even if you've got a regular setup here, with uh, you can um, get the metal pretty damn cold. I wouldn't go too much colder than your actual, or sorry, too close to the coldest level of your coolant for example if you're using polluted water and you've got it set at zero on your aqua tuner so it's running at you know minus 14 or whatever i would have this set uh you know no colder than maybe like 10 or so because the bigger the temperature difference between the the coolant and the stuff you're trying to cool the faster heat will be exchanged and uh, this second pipe you can just ignore that was the pipe i was using to inject there's a second tamer over here that was the pipe I was using to inject the polluted water before I realized that it was just freezing in the pipes and I actually couldn't use a coolant here because it was too cold. So one last thing on this uh, is discussion of the overpressure method. Now, I see a lot of people pumping out gas out of a lot of chambers that they don't need to. You know, setting up a pump, you know, pumping it out or setting up a liquid lock, yada yada. Just way, way, way extra effort, way too much time spent for something that's completely unnecessary. When uh, a chamber is three high, if it is too high, then what I will use is a two layers of liquid. I will put in a, like usually there's supposed to be a bottle emptier here, and I will put in one layer of one liquid and one layer of another liquid, and that will force all the air out and before I start it up. But if there's three tiles, it becomes much harder. Also, if you're on another planet, like I am here, and you only necessarily have one type of easily available liquid, then it becomes a bit trickier. And what I do with three tiles high is what I call to be the overpressure method, where when I am putting water on the chamber, I will put significantly more than I will need to fill the chamber. I typically aim for somewhere between maybe like 
you know, 30 and 80 kg of steam pressure. You, you want to be under 100, but I would be over 10 usually is kind of what I try to shoot for. There, It really doesn't matter whether you're at 10 or 90, but you just don't want to get too low or too high. But what I will do is I will put more water in here than I actually need to create a higher steam pressure than I actually want. And then once the steam, once the water has uh, vaporized the steam, I will crack open an insulated tile very briefly and let the hot steam push all the bad air out. And once the bad air is out, I will quickly reseal it, you know, using a high priority command. This is much faster and much simpler than uh, using a, than, than using, you know, the whole vacuum pump out. As you can see, we've got a pure steam chamber here. No problem. Uh, one other thing to note real quick, if you were going to use this on a aluminum volcano, you probably want to use two steam turbines because aluminum comes with a very high SHC. Uh, this one is, a, you know, was done kind of freeform to my hand. It wasn't uh, the same blueprint you're looking. Ignore that little break here. That was a stupid mistake. And uh, the water will flow, keep things cool, and then or nice cold aluminum will eventually flow out through the conveyor back to where it needs to go. I really like these designs because it keeps the metal, it allows you to regulate the temperature of the metal very, very finely. You can go as cold as your coolant is going. It will take a little bit longer to get there. And most importantly, it cycles the metal fast enough that it doesn't back up. As you can see, there is no metal backed up in the volcano here, even though it takes time in order to do its thing. It gets it cold enough quickly enough that it will never leave a metal, any metal backed up in here. You will get all your metal relatively quickly. Yep, there it is. Compact, self-powered metal volcano tamer with a double loop. Uh, oh, one last, last thing. This little ladder segment, I'm a big fan of doing this kind of thing in my tamers uh, because the way I tend to access them is by opening them from the top. Like as I said for the overpressure part. So I just tend to crack that open and that little ladder just allows them to easily access everything inside, get back out, you know, without taking up a lot of space in the steam chamber. So that's, some, that's something you're going to see a lot of my designs is a little ladder segment on the second row of the steam chamber. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video. I stream most days at Twitch TV, SF Hobbit. And thanks for watching.